Grade 9, Natural Science, Resource Pack, Term 3, page 17. Learners, we're going to look at these three activities on page 17. These activities refer to circuit diagrams, both parallel and series connections. Before we actually work through the activities, I want to ensure that you have a good understanding of a few concepts. These concepts are ammeter readings, voltmeter reading, and resistance in an electric circuit. Now, if you take the first one, ammeter reading, this refers to current flow in the circuits and we use an ammeter to measure the current flow. In the diagrams you will notice that the ammeter readings are shown as A1, A2, A3 and A4 in figure 14. These are all ammeters and you're getting ammeter readings. For example, a4, the ammeter reading is 4 amps. The unit for current flow is amps, which is shown as capital letter A. What do we know about current flow in the circuits? We should know by now that in the series circuits, the current flow will be the same throughout the entire circuit. For example, a4 and A3 should have the same ammeter readings because they're connected in series. However, in the parallel circuit, the current flow can differ. There is more than one pathway in the parallel circuit. As you can see in figure 15, there's branches here. You've got a2, A3, two ammeters connected in parallel, and you'll notice A2, 0.5 amps. Ammeter 3, 1.5 amps, which is telling us that the current flow in both differs. So in parallel circuits, the current flow can differ, depending which pathway we're looking at. Okay, now that's current flow. Then we get to voltage. And you'll notice that across the cell here in figure 15, across the battery or the cell, you'll find the voltmeter reading is 12 volts. Now in a parallel circuit, that voltmeter reading is going to be the same across the resistors as well. In other words, V2 is actually going to have the same voltmeter reading. That's how voltmeter readings are done in parallel circuits. Right. Now, let's go on to the activities and let's take activity one, study the circuit diagram alongside, then give the readings on ammeters A1, A2, and A3. Right, so if we're looking at ammeter 1, ammeter 2, and 3 in the diagram, we need to figure out what is the current flow here at these points. What would the reading be? The only clue we got here is that a4, ammeter 4, it's 4 amps. Now learners, from what I told you in the beginning, you'll notice that A4 and A3 are connected in series. These ammeters are in series. So therefore, the current flow in series is the same throughout the circuit. So A3, your answer should be 4 amps. I hope that's making sense. A1 and A2, 
Now here is branching off, right? These are connected in parallel. And A1 and A2 now, they're going to have a different reading from the other two. And if you look at it, if you've got a total current flow of 4 amps, and it goes into the both branches, and the resistance on both branches are the same, then it stands to reason that the current flow in both branches is also going to be the same. So 4 amps moving through the circuit will divide equally into both these parts. And A1 and A2, therefore, both will have 2 amps each. And when that combines in the series circuit again, you got your 4 amps. Okay? So, our answers here, we said A1 is 2 amps, A2 will be 2 amps, A3 will be 4 amps, because A3 is connected in series, A1, A2, both connected in parallel, the current flow divides here. Why does it divide equally in this case? Because the resistance on each pathway is the same as well. Okay, let's move on to activity two. For the circuit diagram alongside, give the readings on the ammeter A1 and voltmeter V2. All right. A1, ammeter 1, let's see. We notice that the only ammeter readings we have is in A2, it's 0 0.5 amps. In A3, it's 1.5 amps. Now, these are in parallel. If it's going to link up to the series circuit, it stands to reason that you've got to add both these to get A1, ammeter reading 1, which is in series. Remember, these pathways are in parallel, right? So the current flow separates here. But remember, it's rejoining there, right? And there's getting to A1. So A1 reading is going to be 0 0.5 amps plus 1.5 amps giving us a total of 2 amps for A1, ammeter reading 1. Voltmeter 2, we need the voltmeter for 2. The only information we have here is that voltmeter 1 across the battery is 12 volts. And we now know this is a parallel connection here. And I did tell you in the beginning of the lesson that the voltmeter across the battery in the parallel circuit is the same for the voltmeter reading across the resistors connected in parallel. So V2 is also 12 volts. B, which ammeter is in the branch? with the highest resistance. Okay, learners. The answer here is A2. Now, why is it A2? The highest resistance. Because the current flow here is only 0 0.5 amps. And when the current flow is low, it means the resistance is high. So the answer is A2, ammeter 2. Activity 3, for the circuit diagram alongside, give the readings on ammeters A3 and A4. All right, let's see what we have in the diagram. We've got A1, which is 3 amps. So immediately, it stands to reason that A4 is also connected in series, 
and the current in series in the series part of the circuit is the same throughout. So A4 is also going to be 3 amps. Then we've got to figure out A3. Now, if the total current is 3 amps in the circuit, and we said in the parallel part, the current is going to separate and it can differ. So if you got in A2, one amp here, and the total current is three amps, it means the balance, three amps minus one amp, will give you two amps. So A3 is two amps of current flow. And the last, B, which ammeter is in the branch with the highest resistance? The answer here is A2. Again, why? A2 has one amp. You'll notice the current flow is lower. And if the current flow is lower here, then it means the resistance in this pathway is higher. So our answer for B is A2, ammeter 2.